So the other day I was having dinner with some friends and then even though we're not going to be able to see each other for six months, she proposed. Oh my God, that is wonderful news. Congratulations. Boring. Are they going to be like this all night? I swear every time we talk about something that isn't climate change, they throw a massive huff. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I ruin the atmosphere? Well, yeah. Or was that humanity's <sighs> emissions of greenhouse gases? Oh, actually, Adam, I had a climate change question. No, don't do it. Look, I know climate change is important, but we need to stop encouraging this antisocial behavior. Look, climate change is a pretty immense, complex disaster, right? I mean, yeah, for sure. And that means that fixing it is also pretty complex. Yup. So isn't that also why we need a plan B? Well, I'm not sure what plan B looks like when we only have one planet. Exactly. But what if we had another planet? Mars. What if we colonized our nearest neighbor in the solar system? Well, yeah, that could be a pretty cool way of sidestepping global warming. I mean, it sounds kind of sci-fi, but I have heard some pretty serious people talking about it. Definitely. I mean, as Elon Musk said, Mars. And who's more serious than Elon Musk? Oh, just hang on a minute. Hello. Hey Adam, Katie Mac here. I uh, hope I'm not disturbing you. Oh no, don't worry. You're not interrupting anything. I'm just at some boring dinner. Hey! Will you be quiet? I'm on the phone with Astro Katie. Astro Katie, the science communicator and theoretical astrophysicist with the critically acclaimed book on the end of the universe. Do you know any other Astro Katie? Well, then ask her about the climate change Mars colony thing. Oh, right. Yeah, that would make narrative sense. Astro Katie. Katie, you love space, right? We, we have met, haven't we? And what do you think about Mars? Love it. And sending people to Mars? Super cool. Okay, so you agree. Setting up a huge Mars colony to escape climate change is a great idea. What? What? No, no, terrible idea, oh. terrible idea. She says that it's a terrible idea. Why? Why? Well, for one thing, how would we get there? There are rockets being developed that can carry maybe a handful of people, but they aren't flying yet. And even if we had rockets that could carry hundreds, we'd never be able to get a significant number of humans off the planet. So sending enough people there to actually set up a society would be difficult. Incredibly difficult. And so in that case, who do you send? Uh, just the rich, privileged people or what? That would really be of no help to everyone stuck here having to deal with global warming, which is already disproportionately affecting less privileged people. I mean, the meek shall inherit the earth was supposed to be a good thing. Okay, but what about once we're there? Katie, say we can get a whole bunch of people to Mars to set up a colony. Well, what happens then? Oh, well, in that case, they'd probably die miserably. Wait. What? Mars is an incredibly inhospitable environment. The atmosphere is less than 1% the pressure of the Earth's, and it's nearly all carbon dioxide. So the low pressure means it's impossible for liquid water to exist on the surface. So whatever water there is on Mars is either this like thin wisp of water vapor in the sky or ice in the ground. And the soil contains toxic chemicals, so if you're extracting that water or, you know, growing food or something, that's gonna be a challenge. Is she saying how great it would be? Uh, not exactly. Meanwhile, you're probably living underground the whole time, because with such a thin atmosphere and no global magnetic field, there's virtually no protection from the cosmic radiation. So even with a pressure suit and an oxygen supply, just being on Mars at all, is lethal. Is lethal? Lethal. Lethal. And we're not even getting into the problem of surviving the six or nine month journey out there with the damage to your body of weightlessness and the cosmic radiation en route, plus the psychological pressure of being cooped up in a spaceship and then living buried underground in a hostile, lifeless death world. Okay, so pros and cons to the hostile, lifeless, death-filled world then. No, literally just Cons. Okay, look, I get that it would be really hard to pull off, but combating climate change isn't exactly easy. Isn't it good if we come up with a planet B? Look, the fact is, there's virtually nothing we or the universe could do to the Earth that would make it less habitable than Mars. Catastrophic climate change, asteroid strike, global nuclear war, 
Worst case scenario, if those things happen, you're living underground in climate controlled habitats with heavily filtered air and water, which, surprise, is what you'd have to do anyway on Mars. Okay, but isn't it good to have a backup bunker? Except that on Mars, you can't even rely on the filtered air already having accessible oxygen in it, or there being life of any kind in the soil. Look, essentially the only way to make Earth more hostile to human life than Mars already is would be to have an asteroid strike so powerful it actually breaks the planet in half. And there's just virtually no risk of that happening. Okay, so I guess the boring solution is the best solution. We stay here on Earth and we work to get carbon emissions to net zero. Exactly. And if we're good, we can still have some space exploration on the side. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for phoning. And you know what I always say? Subscribe to Climate Adam? Well, yeah, that too. Subscribe to Climate Adam. But also, until next time, bye. Wait, I didn't tell you why I was... Okay, well, since that's settled, should we talk about something else? Oh, well, I think I might be pregnant. Oh my god, Mildred. No one cares. <sighs> if you don't already, you are going to want to follow Katie on Twitter, at AstroKatie. Literally hundreds of thousands of people already do. And you're also really going to want to check out her book, The End of Everything, which is all about... The end of the universe. Not the Earth, not the planet getting broken in half, but the universe itself being torn apart, or dying in a fiery death, or just fading into nothingness over trillions and trillions of years. Even though I have spent literal decades studying and reporting on physics, there were still loads I didn't know about in this book. Tall in a hilarious and charming way. Links are below. Oh, and speaking of stuff that people don't know, what do you want to know about climate change? Drop it in the comments below and I might just make a video about it. And make sure you're subscribed, partly so you don't miss those videos, but mostly just to make me happy. Okay, until next time. Bye! Bye.